What's up guys, welcome to the channel. Over here at Mike's shop, he's working on his for a little bit and I'm gonna work on the big block a little bit today. Let me show you what I got going on. Comment, like, and subscribe. If y'all wanna support the channel, head on over to turbojohnracing.com. Grab yourself some hats and t-shirts. Appreciate it, guys. So boy, Mike got his blower back pro charger is set up. It's got two kits of nitrous on it ready to go. But what are you doing, Mike? What's happening? Finished everything off yesterday. Uh, finished button wiring up, uh, backed it out, tested the trans brake two-step. Uh, said, okay, pulled it in here. I said, I'm gonna change the oil on the spark plug. Right. And we're going to uh, Galat Thursday night. Right. Changed the oil, which is in the bucket. Uh, didn't see anything funky. There was no metal material on the magnet, on the oil, on the, uh, oil hand bolt. And then I said, okay, well, maybe I need to cut the oil filter open and look. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't have my a cutter here, so it was at the shop. So I took the oil filter to work with me this morning uh, and I cut it open and what did I find? Copper material. A little bit of bearing material, it looks like. Now that's what we were just going over. So this is the second or third time he's changed the oil in it. The oil looks sparkly clean. It's amazing how good the oil looks. This is Brad Penn oil. Yeah. And so, you know, trying to figure out, okay, well is maybe Potentially, you know, sometimes these oil pans, he reused the oil pan, you know, obviously reused the heads and, you know, the valley covers. You try to clean stuff the best you can, but there's a chance maybe in the oil pan, some of those trap doors, some of the screens, some of that stuff could have trapped some of the metal from the previous blow up or even the front timing cover area. I mean, you try to clean everything the best you can. But so what he just did, he took the valve cover off of it, pulled a rock arm out. And generally when you kill a bear and he's down in the lifter valley, and when you're in the lifter valley, you almost always see bearing material in there. And there ain't nothing in there. There's your lifters. Yeah, it is. there is nothing in there. So he's trying to decide if he's going to pull that thing apart, pull it out, or send it. Uh, now, his other motor, motor is obviously coming together. He's got some uh, oil filters from the last two changes. He's going to cut those open and see... I don't know. I mean, it's a it's a crapshoot because right now the motor ain't hurt. If it is getting a bearing, uh, he did push on the thrust. Uh, it does not have much thrust, so the the thrust stuff is fine. That's generally what wears out in the LS motor. But you know, it's I mean, it's one of those things. I mean, usually when you knock the thrust out of them, you can really tell it. So maybe it's just leftover potential bearing material. But I mean, it might not be. But I mean, it is. He could get the oil pan off of it, but he's got to jack it up, get it on there, lay down under there. Oh, I ain't doing it here on my back. <laughs> I drag it to the shop and put it on the lid. Which, you know, that's easy to do. I mean, because it still runs. It still runs. There ain't no knocks. There ain't nothing. Oil pressure still 65 PSI. Yeah. 65. I mean, from what I'm seeing, what he just looked at in the lifter valley, I don't think, I don't know if it's hurt. Um, but you're going to have to make that decision because if it is, I mean, Right now, it ain't hurt bad enough to where it's gonna cost a bunch of money. Well, and if you remember now, the, when I when I hurt the first motor, two, almost two years ago now. Right. As a matter of fact, September, August or September will be two years. All right. Um, it took me six, seven months to get main caps. Then it got, then I got into the rotator, and then when I got in the rotator, and they said I got the wrong main caps. All right. Uh, you know, uh, BTR sent me a new block. This is a, was a brand new block. So everything on this motor is brand new, except for the freaking old pan in the intake. All right. So, I mean, it's, I don't know. It's, I mean, it shouldn't be killing anything. I mean, which it shouldn't have killed anything before either, and it so, did. Uh, and I talked to, uh, talked to the machine shop today. Uh, they are finishing uh, the... Uh, uh, hell, the other motor the, is it. the other motor will be done Wednesday and I'm going to pick it up Sunday right or Saturday morning so that one is ready so I mean maybe it would be worth I don't know maybe it would be worth just sitting this one out Thursday night taking the other one slapping it in and then well everything bolt on I mean you're going to have different heads and stuff so I mean it would just be a different motor well, different engine I have I have uh, the heads that I was running on that 408 that's back there in the corner right uh, so they're, they're just stock ported LS3s. Gotcha. Uh, these are not, these are the Frankenstein 311s. But you'll um, use that same intake. Same intake, same rocker arms. Um, I'm gonna, I'll probably use it, the camshaft that was in the 408. I like it better than this one. Same blower, all same that Same blower, stuff. I mean, everything's gonna bolt on exactly the same. 
That might be what I would do. And then you could take put this one on the engine stand, take it apart, and see it. What if it's nothing great? Uh, I mean, you missed one race. That's okay. Uh, if it is something, and you go and race it, and it kills the crank or kills the rods, I mean, then it's thousands of dollars. I think I'm gonna call the car zipper. Zipper. Because it's like a zipper. <laughs> well, well, luckily you're getting good at pulling it in and out. <laughs> so we all got problems. We all got issues. Yeah, it's, 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 it never I mean, ends. This is race have, race car life. If it does have an issue uh, in the bearings or something, it's probably when the procharger ruptured. All right. Uh, and you know, it, it either wipe the bearing, wipe the thrust, or something. Because I mean, that does. I mean, when things like that happen, they go out of balance. It sends vibrations through the motor, so it could have flexed the crankshaft and start start killing a, a main bearing. I don't know. So I mean, he's got some decisions to make. I've got the big block stuff over here. I started working on this. I just got my timing pointer on it. So I'm gonna show y'all real quick how to make sure top top dead center your timing pointer is marked properly here. And this is very easy to do. Let me show you real fast. Hang on. All right, guys. So I got this set up. Let me show you. So I got my new uh, timing pointer on here. My, my balancer is, my harmonic balancer is marked. So this is good. So we've got this dial indicator here is, I think, the official terminology for it. So we got this set up close to the center of the piston. We can't get it all the way to the center because of the dome. But basically what we do here is we're close to top dead center and you can tell because my pointer is here and my zero is here and then we're gonna like rotate it, right? And so as we rotate it, you will see this dial indicator. It's gonna get close to zero and then it's gonna have a dwell at zero. Zero, dwell, and then go back down. So did you notice there was a little bit of a, uh, a lag? And so now of course we're past there. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to go, I'm going to go back. I'm going to go about a hundred thousandths past. And you see we're at 20 degrees before top dead center here. So I'm going to run this up to, we know that when my indicator here is on zero, that the piston is as high up as it's going to come. And it dwells there for a minute. And that's where sometimes you get messed up. So we're going to run it to, there's 50 thousandths before top dead center. And if you look down there, we're at 10 degrees. So what we can do is the easiest thing is so at 50 degrees, then we go and we're going to top dead center. So now we're at top dead center and this is really close to zero. But now the important part is we're gonna run it back to 50. And so then we're gonna stop it when it gets to 50 right there. Man, I did pretty good with one hand. And so then we're on the other side of this balancer. Now, if this was a 360 degree balancer, then it would be on 290 and it would be set or it would be on 280 and then you know you had to move it. So since this one is not a 360 degree balance, what you have to do is I'm gonna go get a vernier caliper, I think is what some of the people told me it was officially called. And I'm gonna mic from here to here. I'm gonna see what this distance is. And then I'm gonna put me a mark on this other side. And then if that mark lines up with that, then we got it. We're at top dead center. We don't have to adjust anything. And that means our timing pointer is good. When we put the harmonic balancer, timing, when we put the timing light on it, it's gonna be what it is. Let me get a caliper real fast, hang on. All right guys, so we got this thing set back up. I did, I've been playing with it for a little while. So let me show you what we did. I did end up having to move it. So we're gonna run this till we get to 10. So that's about 10. And I say about, but that is pretty precise. And then when you look up here, our dial indicator is on 64. So now we're gonna go, I did end up marking the crankshaft. Man, you can't really see it, but it's there. So we're gonna run this back to where it goes to 64. Boom, 64 up there. And then that lines up with my little mark. Can you see my mark? It's a little more clear in the in person. There it is, you can see it. So now we 100% know that this is 10 degrees before top dead center. That's 10 degrees after top dead center. Our micrometer, our dial indicator, our wheelie thing that measures distance, whatever you want to call it. 
this is on the same number. So now 100%, we know that when this is on zero, it truly is on zero. So that's why it's important. You gotta do this at least once or twice in a new build. Um, generally, if you're putting all the stuff, same, same stuff back together again, and you just take this loose here, it probably won't change much, but it's always a good idea to verify top dead center. So that's how you verify top dead center is accurate with the piston at top dead center and the, the timing pointer. That's how you do it. All right, guys, well, that's gonna wrap it up. Uh, we put this 36 minus one on here and that fits perfect, but the, the bracket is not in the right spot. So I'm gonna see if I can just order a bracket. If I can order a bracket, then I think I'll be good to go. If not, then I'll just order that kit. A lot of people are going with the, you know, the, the flying magnet, the 12 minus one. I'm kind of digging. I like the, the 36 minus uh, one, I guess is what it would be. That's the missing tooth there. It's real simple to set this up every time you put it in. So I guess we're done for tonight, but that's how you do top dead center. We go in tomorrow night to get my heads from Mike. I'll give y'all an update. Uncle Mike shop uh, on the new Mustang. Check it out, guys. What do you think, Mike? It is what it is. <laughs> <laughs>